What's up everyone? Hope you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be talking about the FX30 and how much I love this camera. For the longest time, I stuck my nose up at any crop sensor camera, anything that was non full frame. For some reason I had it just beat into my head that anything that wasn't full frame was not worth shooting on, but it just doesn't hold up anymore. That, that reasoning doesn't hold up with technology. Technology is caught up and they're making some killer cameras. Now I'm not just gonna list off specs of this camera. Anyone can look up the specs of this camera online uh, and, and see that for themselves. Uh, that's not, I'm not gonna waste your time doing that today. The reasons I love this camera is that it's so similar to the FX3 body wise. And then also the images are just spectacularly sharp coming out of it. It's a 6K sensor down sampled to 4K. And when you pair that with a modern lens, the images are just incredibly sharp. When you hold it up next to the FX3 and the FX6, the FX30 tends to be the sharpest image. But I'll say probably the biggest reason why I love this camera is that I can match the colors and the look so easily to my other cameras. I've made another video about that, it'll be somewhere. Now I'm not gonna claim that I've used this camera more than everyone else. I know that there's people out there who use this camera every day. I lean towards using my FX6 more than all my other ones. But in my time using this camera, there is one flaw which has stuck out to me. Now I'm not talking about something that the camera does not have like internal NDs or showing your shutter angle. I'm talking about something that the camera does, but does not do well. And that is shoot 120 frames a second. I've found that if I'm gonna be shooting 120 frames a second on the FX30, I've gotta either be shooting in the middle of a bright sunny day or in an extremely well lit setting or situation. Everything else, every clip is just so full of noise. I've noticed that even in some of those extremely well-lit situations when shooting 120, I still get tons of noise in my clips. Comparing this to the FX3, there is a huge difference in cleanliness of image and in their noise levels. For the FX30, it's really too much and it makes these images practically impossible to use. Now, here comes a little bit of confession time. If you've seen my Glacier National Park video on my channel, you'll notice some extremely noisy, muddy, ugly images at the beginning of the video. Uh, even some of you have pointed it out to me, which is really what made me notice it. You see, when I was making this video, I was in a huge time crunch. Um, and I, I don't like giving excuses, and this is my only form of one that I can give. Really, it's just my fault that those images were in there. But when I was making this video, I, I was in a huge time crunch, shooting and editing and getting this out to Sony so that they could post it and I could post it. Uh, I, I was really excited about this video. I, I still am, I still love this video. I was asked by Sony Cine to test the camera out. Then I decided to go to Glacier with the purpose of just trying out everything on this camera and seeing what it can do. The only problem was that I could, I could only make that trip happen and, and the video work after they had already announced the camera. And that put a lot of pressure on myself. And also going into it, I had never been to Glacier. And going there, I was just blown away by just the spectacle of the entire place. So all that to say, when I got back, uh, I was just thrilled with all the images. I think I was just so pumped about everything that, I sh that I'd gotten from that camera and just so just determined to get that video out that I just overlooked how noisy those clips were. If I had had probably a little bit more time to sit on that edit or been a little bit more diligent and patient with it all, I probably would not have included those clips or used neat video on them and, and made it just more usable. So I decided to test this out just a little bit further before just totally just writing it off in my brain that shooting 120 is completely pointless with this camera. I had the opportunity to shoot an event in Austin. Going into it, I thought what better an opportunity to test this out just a little bit further. And it's gonna be a sweet, very cool setting, cool lighting setup, great subject. Let's try this out one more time. Now, all my shots were shot at the higher ISO of 2500. 24, 60, and 120. Every single one was shot at that high ISO. You can see here that the 120 is just completely unusable. Uh, it, it's pretty much just downright awful. Please ignore the banding. The frequency of the lights and, and my camera were off. So you're gonna, we're gonna see some kind of nasty banding throughout the image, but focus more on the noise, those noise levels across it. And you can also see 
side by side the ungraded and the graded version. No matter how you put it, no matter how you look at it, the noise there is just awful. I wouldn't even use it for even a social media post. It's just, it's really bad. But look at the other shots that I took there shooting 24 and 60. You're still getting a little bit of noise, but it almost looks like grain in, in the image. And I kind of like it. I, I like that, that aesthetic and that look. So I really don't mind it in those, in the 24 and in the 60. So just to be diligent with this and not come across ignorant, let's do one final test to where we compare shooting 120 on both ISOs of this camera at 800 and then also at 2500. After kind of finishing this video, I can say that I was a little strict or harsh on this function of this camera, but I will say that in a professional setting, working setting, if there's even a question that it's not well lit enough, this, the setting's not lit enough or I don't have enough light, there's, there's no way I'd use the 120 frames a second on this camera just with the chance of getting some really nasty noise and grain. So tell me what you think. Do you think it's worth the effort to shoot 120 on this camera and then clean it up or just make sure it's super bright or should you just go ahead and shoot 120 on a different camera? Side note, shooting 120 is overused. You don't need to shoot 120 all the time. 60 frames a second is pretty much all that you need to shoot. It, it gets the job done. Thank you for watching all the way through. Thank you for watching my videos, for paying me any attention at all. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon.